In this video, I'm gonna show you my public brain, which you can explore at notes.daltonmabry.com and how I organize and take notes in Obsidian. So without further ado, let's jump into Obsidian and see what this is all about. All right, on the left side here, we have my Obsidian, which is pulled up just uh, the regular Mac download. And then on the right side here, we have my public notes. So right now the domain is a, a little wonky, but I'm gonna set this up to my subdomain on my personal site. So you'll be able to get to it quicker, but this whole note taking system is inspired by Andy, uh, Andy's notes. So if I open this up real quick, you can kind of see his layout, um, honestly. So it's, um, you kind of click around to links and they open up in these kind of pans and kind of scroll along. And so ever or obsidian gives you the ability to do this with obsidian publish. It is $20 a month and I've been debating it for like four or five months now. I kid you not. I just didn't want to spend the money on it, but as I kept taking more and more notes in Obsidian and kind of revamping my note taking and my creation and mixing ideas together, I thought this is the best way to increase serendipity for other people to come across these and say, hey, I really think like this guy or I really don't think like this guy. Let's have a conversation because that's what I did when I started reading Andy's notes. I thought, man, this is this guy's super cool. I love the way that he's writing and taking notes and researching and I want to kind of eminent that or um, emulate. That's the word I was looking for. I want to emulate that and um, just have someone discover what I do or me discover other people. So basically there's kind of like this homepage here and there's no index. Some people do have the sidebar on the left side. I don't like to do that. Um, you just kind of have to jump off wherever. So I have a couple different options. So what's top of mind? Um, basically these are some things that I'm thinking about. I have a today I learn section. So this is kind of my daily log um, or at least as daily as I can get it to be. Um, where basically I just put the day's, today's date and then I click um, or I write in a new uh, today I learned. So if I go in here over on the left side, in my like actual obsidian, I can click into the today I learned and you'll see all of these. I know I spelled the words wrong. It's fine. Don't worry about it. So I can click into any of these and then I can see basically the content on the left side and edit it. But then if, if you're scrolling around, you can see the exact same thing and you can even jump around to... Um, some like weekly notes here. So I have that basically this is what I consume this week, have a couple articles. So I have after the fact, this is a different article by Morgan Housel, um, and then just some some different kind of notes and stuff. And basically that's, that's it. That's just my notes, my public notes. Uh, you can go to my daily reading log and, and see what I learned about, and then just follow links and learn things, which I think is really cool um, in a way to just not have the pressure of making a complete blog post for an idea where I'm like, I really wanna get this idea out there. I really wanna think about this and write about it, but it's not necessarily a full blog post. This is a perfect place for that. And, uh, and it just shows a little bit about who I am, which I think is really cool. So now moving over to actual Obsidian and how I kind of plan and organize my notes. On the left side, I have an add to note cards folder, which is basically terms or theories that I learned that I want to add to these note cards here. So I have just a full stack of note cards on uh, kind of next to my desk, see if that'll focus. And it's basically just notes, but actual note cards and its ability. It's uh, just more physical, um, something that I like to write down and I just have it and I'm working on sorting them out. This system I adapted from Ryan Holiday. He wrote a couple posts on how he used the note cards for writing his books and organize everything. So I'm really liking that. It does feel a little redundant, I must say, having them on obsidian and in my note cards trying to reconcile that uh, but for now that's just how i'm doing it so i'll have an idea write it down in obsidian and then that'll move to add to note cards and they're usually terms as you can see here i learned this the other day berkeley's razor or the gal gelman amnesia um, these are some terms i learned and then moving down the list here i have a daily notes folder which is obviously a folder for all of my daily notes and if you look that's tomorrow so there's nothing there and if you look here I have um, a scratch pad where it's basically just writing down random thoughts throughout the day. I have an embed for what I consumed this week so I can add anything in here and it's going to update. And then I also have uh, today I learned. So just um, a subheading for to write down stuff today I learned. And then I write them in here and then go add it to my today I learned blog, which is right uh, here. So I just add in there. So that is my daily notes. I have drafts for some articles that I'm working on, 
one about Einstein and one about a record player. Those are coming out soon. And then a folder for all of my evergreen notes uh, or permanent notes if you're the Zettelkasten fan. Um, it's just basically notes where I feel like I've developed them enough. They have resources. It's an idea that I feel good with keeping how it is. And of course, I'm still going to tweak them and stuff, but here's an example of one. So Walt Disney's three room system for creating ideas. So we had the first room, which was the dreamer, which was um, whatever you thought of, just brainstorm, just write it down. The next room was the spoiler, which is uh, how would those ideas actually work? How would you get them to work? And then the realist, which is uh, showing why those ideas won't work. And so having a separate room for the ideas or things you're working on really helps you out in brainstorming and thinking of creating things. So this is an idea of an evergreen note and I have some more tags here. So if I click uh, creativity, have just one more thing on creativity, Einstein's ability to detach from people helped him, helped his creative idea flourish. This is a quote from Einstein biography I read. Um, and yeah, so that's an example of an evergreen note. Literature notes are just basically notes, what you would think of a more typical style of notes. I showed you this earlier on the site, but uh, so I read an article today about observed patterns around major technological advances, and it had some a couple bullet points I just wanted to jot down. Um, and then going down the list, I have a map of content. So I've seen different examples for this, and a lot of them are empty now um, as I'm just starting to um, kind of build these out. But basically, it's a topic. It's an index for a topic. And so wealth is a, is a topic I want to obviously study and learn about. And so basically, anything I learn about wealth, I'm able to put here. So an article I read earlier um, called After the Fact was an article about wealth. I have two books I've read. I haven't made notes for them yet. Um, but those are books on wealth. So those are going to go under the books category. So Basically, it's just anything that revolves around wealth is all going to go around here. And then when I'm done, and not done as in this category is finished, it'll never be finished, hopefully. But when I've got some more content in here, I can break it down and grab um, sources and, and articles for, okay, what sources, what ideas go under the term of spending less than you make um, and stuff like that. So that's the map of content. And this is the real difference between Obsidian and, and most note-taking apps is that the map of contents are emergent. So you have, you're taking notes and all of a sudden you realize, oh my gosh, I have 25 notes on wealth. I should kind of formulate those and create basically my own map of content for wealth rather than creating a folder for one note because it's for wealth and you have to throw that in there and then you never see it again. So that's a real difference between uh, the map of content idea and most typical note-taking um, processes. Next folder down, just people. Um, so whenever I make a page for a person, I know Tim Urban has a lot of backlinks. So I go here and open backlinks. You can see all of the backlinks uh, that I've taken notes on, kind of listened to a couple podcasts with him lately. Um, projects I'm working on, just really, really doing my blog. And then this is a folder for published images. Um, with the Obsidian Publish, you have to have a folder for Im images you want to publish. So I just throw those in there and make sure they're all published. The sort folder is basically like a random, I don't know where to toss this. And this is what I love about Obsidian because I can just throw random files in there and I know that I'm not going to lose it. I know where it's going to be and I can just search for it by tags or anything like that. And I just know it's going to work. The next one, I just have uh, folders for templates. So articles, books, map of contents, and notes. Next one, theories and terms. Basically, once I add them to my note cards, then I drag them down to theories and terms for more kind of permanent, and that's where they just stay. Thoughts is empty. This is basically random thoughts. It's kind of like evergreen notes, but maybe not as complex, and maybe it's a little more personal, so I'm not going to publish them. Maybe that's where um, I'll throw in thoughts. A Today I Learned folder for anything specific to uh, my Today I Learned. So this is actually something I learned on organizing stuff in Maps of Contents, uh, funny enough. Um, and then we have a weekly notes. So there's a great plugin called Calendar, I believe, on Obsidian. So if you go to the settings and you go to community plugins and you can search browse and you can just search calendar and it allows you to kind of have this calendar widget down here and you can jump to any daily note. And then you also have on the left side here, the week number. So if you see, it says W and then Sunday, Monday. So if you start with a week, that's the week of the year. And then you kind of have a... Um, a weekly note, which I really like for weekly reviews, adding stuff, stuff I need to work on. Obviously, I had to fix my sliding glass door, which I'm not looking forward to, um, and stuff like that. So 
Underneath the folders, I kind of have my more like jumping off pages. So again, about these notes, I don't change this too frequently. This is kind of the home page for uh, my public notes, but um, in case I do want to change it, it's just right here. Cool things I found online, basically just, I don't know, things I want to revisit. Um, so if I open my backlinks here, you can see on this right pane here, uh, there we go. So most of them are a reference under the daily notes, but it's basically, I just tag cool things I found online, have a little comment and then a link to whatever it is. So basically things I want to revisit, things I want to share in my newsletter, sign up for that link in the description. Um, things I want to share with friends, anything I find online, I throw this tag in there and sometimes add it straight to the page, but usually it's easier just to add it to my daily note and then tag this page. My reading inbox, um, kind of similar. This is kind of similar to cool things I found online, but basically stuff I want to read or watch. My writing inbox, these are basically evergreen notes that haven't been created into evergreen content yet. So I just have ideas here and every morning is I try to just take one or two um, and write a little bit more about them. And so that's just, this is my big thing with, um, you have to have, actually have a system to sort the ideas. So Andy talks a lot about in his, in his site, Andy's notes, um, that if you want to have a system for writing or reading, you have to actually make sure you're clearing that system and that, that stuff out, or it's just going to become clogged in a big junk pile basically is, is what he says. And so what I do is I try to I put in as much as I can. And I know that every morning I'm going to try to write at least one. And I know as long as I do that, I'm going to slowly chip away at my writing inbox pile. And some of these will be turned into longer essays or articles, and, and some are just going to stay as evergreen notes, and I'm fine with that. But it's just one list for stuff that I want to write about. And I also um, backlink these sometimes when there's something that I want to write about, I think about real quickly, and I'm on a different page. I just tag my writing inbox so it appears here. My research inbox, stuff I want to research um, empty because it's kind of the same thing as my reading inbox, so I'm trying to reconcile with that. Tasks, I don't have really anything. These are kind of fake tasks. I'm work, testing out a, a tasks plugin. Don't really like it. I don't think tasks are really made for Obsidian. I don't think you should use your task in Obsidian. I'm trying to figure out the best way to use tasks, so I will uh, get back to you guys when I figure that out. Uh, and then this is just an article I was actually just taking notes on, which is a really good article about um, just because someone's an influencer doesn't mean they're successful and um, kind of controversial, but I loved it. I really agreed with a, a lot of um, what they were saying. I'll link that down in the description box below if you wanna if you wanna give it a read. And yeah, that is how I take my notes and publish my notes in Obsidian. Thanks for watching. I hope to see you guys in the next video.